Good afternoon, morning, evening, or night, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Quarren Cast. Was that right? Quarrent? No, Quarrent Cast. Quarrent Cast, right? The, the Quarren Bean Cast. The Quarrent Bean Cast. <laughs> Hello, bean. And welcome to the Quarren Cast episode. This is one episode one, really. Um, First episode. Uh, as you can probably see if you're watching the video version, we're in a beautiful forest somewhere, safely quarantining away from civilization. With um, with the current events that are happening, we've decided to do what's, what's in everyone's best interest and uh, go on a quarantine for a while. So we're out in this gorgeous, just fucking beautiful place. <laughs> Sorry, we've been here for a while. Like I'm losing my mind. Yeah, being isolating is is actually quite tough on the mind. You become so. It's tough on the soul. Yeah. Um... It's it's <laughs> it's a lot, and we've been doing our best out here, and so far we're doing well. We're we're still um living and breathing. Yeah, but before we get any deeper, let's shout out the. Uh patrons over at the jar media patreon thanks for supporting us and making the, uh, version of the show possible raise a light to the patrons homies you support us we love you <laughs> be safe so yeah we're being responsible as i hope everyone else is at home uh i guess that's the biggest change since the last time we recorded like the country wasn't in lockdown <laughs> The yeah. UK wasn't in lockdown, so we didn't have to go out into the forest and just kind of camp out here for safety for a while. Like, when the f they see this, it'll be a Monday. Like, it would have been a week from when there was the big news that, you know, we were on basically on a, a complete lockdown. And it's just yeah. crazy how quickly things have gone to quite the really severe level, almost. Yeah, what do you think, Jim? Yeah, I mean... This isn't the kind of thing that you see every every week, you know, or even no, every on, I was even every about decade. This. I was thinking about this. This might be the 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 craziest event I've ever experienced. And we li I've lived through like nine eleven. Like this is crazier because it's it's like not removed, you know, like it's affecting yeah, everyone suppose, in the yeah. whole planet. And it's it's not like we've got to go far to see like the actual result of it. Like, you go to our local Tesco and you're standing at four metres apart and you're only allowed in it, like, three at a time. You're standing at the other end of the car park waiting to to get in. It's, like, it's fucking crazy now. It's absolutely wild. And I wouldn't have thought it would have got to this extreme so fucking fast. Well, at least we have some positives, though. <laughs> yeah. I noticed we had a really nice piece of feedback um, on the Reddit I'd like to read before we truly get into this episode deep and proper. So listen to this, guys. This this was posted from um, user <laughs> born to die, forced to live. With the headline being, well, the header being, my, my parents joined the cult of Jar? Question mark. I'll post this as a subject on the upcoming cast, but I thought I'd make this standalone thread as this story is kind of interesting. So here goes. I often hear other Jarlings mention how Jar Media is bleeding into their lives, and I thought I'd mention how both my parents have been converted to Jarcast fans. After the oh, no. infamous Shreddies episode, I decided to show it to my mum. <laughs> to my su surprise, she found the lads very entertaining. I should note my mum's in her 50s and naturally still watches TV, thus being disconnected from most internet concepts outside of what I occasionally introduced to her. My dad, on the other hand, pretty much hates any YouTube content that isn't the slow-mo guys, which we do sometimes watch over dinner. But given the humorous nature of the Shreddies episode, I thought it could be a way to break through to him. <laughs> Surely enough, I was right. Fast forward to now, and we frequent the POSDAC during most dinners, and even my dad enjoys a lot of the jokes. Though I often, no way. <laughs> though I often skip over the questions like, how much <laughs> how much would you need to be paid to suck off the nostalgia critic? <laughs> <laughs> For obvious reasons, and I still don't think they're quite ready for Alex's masturbatory tales. But my dad was sold after the debate after about tasting through one scrotum, which he found very funny. He also enjoyed the recent question about what drugs the cast had taken and Alex's interest in DMT. Being a drug rehabilitation officer at a prison, he knows a lot about the subject and found the, the lads discussion interesting. Mum's now familiar with the Bardonna law and really enjoyed hearing about Jim's Phantom Menace, 
though I have to explain the deep cut jar lore that drops up from time to time. She really likes James and describes him as the one that doesn't say as much, but when he does, it's something completely out of left field. And that makes <laughs> hey. her She's also interested to see what Ruben is like on the cast, but she hasn't seen him appear in one yet. Mum recently told me she used to think they were immature, bo immature boys talking about nonsense and making weird noises when I had them in the background of my room, but after watching some videos, they're actually rather funny. But I think her opinion, well, I think her first opinion is still true too. In conclusion, the cast has two 50-year-old fans for certain. Bloody hell. Boys. Incredible. We often joke about uh, the average age of our, what we assume our listener base is. We, we get statistics, but, you know, anyone can lie about that stuff. So we usually assume, what, 12-year-olds? Pensioners. <laughs> but, yeah, w this might be a good chance to kind of tilt our uh, our focus on the, you know, the, the boomer market. Yeah, we, we've got to get into, like, most of the markets, and I think the boomer market is one we need to aim for to in order to cement our continued success in the youtube youtube uh, landscape pivoting completely um i've got a, a story to tell you guys oh oh really yeah about something that happened um the other day when i went off into the forest without you guys um <clears throat> and had a little showdown with somebody oh oh shit what well, genuine happened weapon. Yeah, somewhere around here, like, um, I was, because uh, we're allowed to go out once a day for exercise, and that's when I walk the dogs, um, and I, I had a bit of a showdown with the, another dog owner, which was, which was something. It wasn't, it, it was, it's honestly the first time I've ever had to truly get, um, confrontational, kind of, with a person, um, you know, because they just escalated it in such a way. Um, what what caused it? What was like the catalyst? So this, they were dog walkers. They had, I think, three dogs. Two of them were off lead. One of them was on one of those really long, um, not extendable, but it's just kind of like a long piece of string, effectively, for dogs that people can't control or, or aren't trustworthy, so they have to have them on like a bit of rope. Um, <clears throat> but I started walking towards them, and they shouted like, because that they they were where they were on the path that I I would have to go on anyway to head back home. And yeah. They shouted as I was walking towards them with my dogs. They shouted like, "I wouldn't." As I was walking towards them, which is like, "What, what do you mean? Like it's already too late. Like the dogs are already like running towards each other." Um, Paisley, my golden retriever, like ran over to their dog that was on lead, and then it all like kicked off or whatever, and the 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 aggro big dog like started chasing paisley like quite aggressively um on one of these like super long leashes so of course like they had no control over it so it just started running straight after and because the leash is so long it was able to run for a good like 10 meters or so and it like really pulled the woman and stuff and it's like a probably like pr like dangerous dog i'd say um or at least like potentially growing in danger type dog and I, so, I, I, like, rushed over to grab um, Argy and Paisley and get them on lead so I could get them away from them. And she started being all, like, really gobby to me. Um, just really unnecessarily so, you know? Like, it was horrible. Uh, <laughs> she was, like, doing that classic thing where they, they, they like, project uh, yeah, all yeah, their yeah. shortcomings onto me. They were like, control your fucking dog! All this and all that kind of shit. <clears throat> so I just said back like dude you're the one with the dangerous dog like if it's if, if it's that violent and vicious you need to have a muzzle on it like I stayed calm the whole time or whatever um, but she ke kept like escalating it and being ridiculous and once the situation was under control one of her dogs that was off lead like wandered over to Argy who was next to me and it just started like trying to bite Argy like a different dog this time. So I like, <laughs> I, I nudged it away with my leg or my with my boot to, you know, to protect my dog. And then she was like, she really kicked off then. And she was like, if you kick my fucking dog, I'll come over there and I'll fucking kick you myself. 
like actually threatening me and shit like this and that's when i told her to f off and that's the first so, person i've ever fuck. told to f off in person in that kind of way I, it's I never don't, been pulled out of me before i don't get that attitude when someone has like a a dog that's basically not been socialized like with any dog so they've been like babied well it, so it was like... just yeah exactly it was just the dog version of that woman yeah <laughs> And then Ooh, getting thing. angry at someone, someone else for her, for their dog doing nothing wrong is is fucking ridiculous. That's crazy. Yeah. There's not much more aggravating than people with, like, people that are dickheads about dogs. Yeah, or or even just taking it to the next level of like, people who can't admit that they've made a mistake or are wrong about something ever. Yeah. Like they can never take responsibility. Like. Remove the dangerous dog, and none of that happens, you know? <laughs> so, yeah, like, yeah, who's, yeah. whose onus is it on? Maybe if you've got but a dangerous like, dog, you should walk it somewhere more <laughs> private? Or, like you said, put a goddamn muzzle on it. Yeah, put a muzzle on it if it's that scary. Because I... <clears throat> there are some psycho dogs out there, man. Like, I've seen some alarming-looking animals. The, the other thing I don't get is if they knew their dog was a like a problem, was it gonna like go for other dogs? Why did they continue to have the lead like extended? Why didn't they like pull it closer so yeah, yeah, before yeah. it could get to that like well, state? Because yeah, they had just... it on this ridiculous lead, so I couldn't. They couldn't control it. So it just seems like they just don't really know how to con like have a control a dog like at all. Like, fuck. <clears throat> it's like with Gaius, he. He doesn't care about people. He doesn't care about dogs because he's really dog focused. But if other dog really tries, it's like almost too friendly with him. He does get a bit like vicious almost. He doesn't mm. bite anyone or like that. But it's just like there's a difference between like actual aggression and like warnings though. Like dogs warn each other and tell each other like leave me alone or whatever. But there is definitely a difference between aggro oh. behavior and you know. Just communication. Yeah, definitely. It's like crazy. I, I, I've never like come across a situation like that before, like at all. It's always been pretty good for me, at least. You never had like a, a scary moment where like Gaius has been attacked or anything like that. No, never. He's been uh, he's been pretty good, con like constantly. I remember. I think we might have actually talked about it on the cast before, but our old uh, Labrador had a few incidents, but she was uh, <laughs> mauled by a cat once. My, uh, my, my main memory of, of Flossy was uh, Jack Russell. A male Jack Russell ap approached Flossy, and uh, I guess he thought she was quite attractive. <laughs> oh, dude, obvious... I think I remember this. <laughs> Obviously, Jack Russells are like a quarter of the size of a Labrador. <laughs> and it's, <laughs> it's not a trying to look. No, and Flossy just stood there like... <laughs> I mean, like, I'll take what I can get. <laughs> well, speaking of uh, Jack Russells eating... Uh, well, not eating. <laughs> 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 speaking of Jack Russells, uh, fuck it. Uh, there's something else I want to talk about, right? That is relevant at the moment. Um, that I managed to fucking uh, only think about because we've had so much free time in this in this quarantined area. Yeah. Um, what do you guys well, think about this weird, weird phone call thing? This this drama between this cancelling Kanye oh. thing that's going on. Oh, the drama from 2016 where. The phone call between Kanye and Taylor Swift regarding what could be said on the, one of these singles from Life of Pablo. Yeah, like Kanye, Kanye called Taylor Swift to ask permission f about the the dialogue or whatever in one of the lines in um, Famous, isn't it? What? Yes. I yeah. made that bitch famous. Um, God damn. And. I, I remembered this drama going down originally, but I never properly understood it, and I think I understand it a bit more now. Because, um, like, Kim Kardashian released this 
like segment from a phone call they had making Taylor Swift look like a liar, but now the whole phone call has somehow leaked or whatever. Um, so now you can listen to this f bizarre, like 20 minute long phone call between Kanye West and Taylor Swift. And I don't know if you guys have heard any of it. I listened to the whole thing the other day and I <laughs> just listening to Kanye talk is like such a experience because he's he just sounds like a nutter man like he's so he has such an ego it's, it's genuinely just really? the next level yeah he says uh god what was it he says something like ridiculous he just he comes up with these uh like phrases and shit all the time silver um, surfer in the flesh <laughs> <laughs> like that sort of thing yeah i'll see if i can find an example of like what i'm talking about Mm. Is <laughs> I'm just loading up my phone. Hmm. <laughs> but it, was, it is a it's a fucking awkward like phone call though. What's, like, he, what's he's Taylor Swift like? She's like really polite and like and supportive, even though he sounds like a fucking dickhead. <laughs> he genuinely <laughs> does. Like I like Kanye's music, but like what the fuck, dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you guys cook me some meat, will you? Yeah, I'm feeling hungry. <laughs> All right. Yeah, 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 Sorry yeah, yeah. to interrupt the cast for that, but um, I can't find any examples. But uh, I should have, I should have written one down. But he, oh, no, I found it. I found it. He's, he describes himself as a a, a cultural trillionaire because he's talk, he's talking about how at the time he's like in debt and shit. Cause remember that's like a part of life of public. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. That because of his <laughs> his uh, fashion company, he's, he went into like huge debt. But he says it doesn't matter because he's a cultural trillionaire. What does that even mean? He's saying that he's so like next level famous and important <laughs> and crucial that it doesn't matter. Like money is just nothing to him because he'll always be Kanye and he'll always be, you know. Epic as fuck and all that shit. It's, I mean, I you're, don't you're think... Tay Stan, aren't you, James? What do you think about all this? Well, we, we with the whole conversation leaked, it basically paints the the duo of Kanye and Kim as it's just absolute fucking dicks, <laughs> basically. Like, no doubt about it, they've been shitty. Because my understanding is that. Taylor Swift didn't want like herself referred to as like a bitch or something in the in the call, and then Kanye did in the song. I yeah, because think... because the way he he really like downplays it, <laughs> it's like it makes it really awkward now that we know what the song is actually about and what it sounds like. So hearing him like beat around the bush, kind of, and just like not ask her straight up and tell her. It's like really weird. I'd recommend giving it a listen if you want to be kind of frustrated for 20 minutes. I didn't know that that had come out. You're right there, James. Oh, yeah, yeah. Just fucking slight burn. You are right? Yeah, yeah. I'm good now, don't I? Okay. All right. No, it's fine. It's fine. So what were you saying about uh, Taylor Swift or whatever the fuck? Kanye's uh, just a knob. Um, but, to be honest. Okay, th this is the only interesting question really for me to come out of it then. Um, does it hold, does it mean anything? Cause it, cause of course it became like a cancel Kanye thing. Like, like it fucking has, like everything has to, um, well, when you say, does it mean anything? Is it going to harm him? Yeah. That's no. what I mean. Like, no, it's not. Why is that? Because he's a good Christian boy now. <laughs> well, true. I forgot about him being Christian. Yeah. Like what is the statute of limitations on that? Like. It is a long time ago now, but it's, but those Taylor those Taylor Swift fans, man, they they are passionate. They are more than passionate. That's putting it lightly. Some of them are actually like psychos, like just so passionate about it. But it's like you realize that it's just a human. <laughs> it gets to such a point with some of these fucking like fandoms that I just can't, I can't be doing with it and dealing with it anymore. I'm sorry. Got no respect for that shit, huh? Well, I mean, it's good to have passion, but 
when it's about like following a person or something, it gets kind of creepy. Yeah, like you really have no effect over this situation at all and trying to cancel Kanye and all this. Sure, you can express that it's like a scummy thing to do, but <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, okay? I'm just a Kanye fan trying to defend him, all right? <laughs> yeah, Kanye <laughs> can do no wrong. <laughs> you paid the one side in this trillionaire, war, right? to all. Kanye can do no wrong. <laughs> Kanye is Lord. <laughs> Kanye is heaven. We are water. We are water. We are cultural water. trillionaires. But I'm past Kanye now. I I ain't, I ain't fucking with Kanye. I I I'd actually forgotten about um Jesus is King until literally the other day. Yeah, me too. Where I was like, oh my god, I've forgotten about that album. It's uh, it's I, really not growing on me <laughs> as time goes on. I kind of forgot about it the day after I I listened to it. <laughs> I've not. Like, actually of course, Water is incredible it. and like awesome and shit, but I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm not a fan. Of, I'm not a fan of that album at all. And the the more I, I never have to listen to it, the better. It's an absolute dog shit album, and that's like my final thought of it, and will always be. Um, yeah. Well, to round off uh, the, this last part of um, the first half before we go into fan questions, what have we been uh, occupying ourselves with uh, media wise while we're sitting out here in the forest? Call of Duty. Um, cool of Duty. Cool of Duty. <laughs> any, any other thoughts? I feel like we've talked about this game quite a lot, to be honest. Uh, mate, mate. Have we? Mate. Warzone, Warzone, came, Warzone out. came out. It was really good. Really good. Oh, uh, no, we haven't talked about that. Because they're like... Yeah, I didn't think so. I feel I feel like in my life, because I talk to you guys, I I hear about Call of Duty a fair amount. So I guess it's just bleeding into. I don't know what's reality anymore, to be honest. I feel like we're in like well, some kind know. of virtual world at the moment. You know, it doesn't you feel know, real. Well, I mean, we've had the simulation discussion before, so it makes a lot of sense. There is some real credence to it, though, especially when something this mental happens. It really makes me stop and think, and you know, yeah, 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 and be like. Is this, you know, is this Ben? Well, what's funny really real? is that, what's funny is that, like, they they are making simulations, essentially, to see like what the damage of the coronavirus will be. Oh, seriously, they're making. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, if we didn't self quarantine, they've made simulations to see how much damage that would do. Or really? like, is maths it, like, or whatever. really bad, catastrophic. Yeah, but yeah. It's fucking bad. But you can see how um, simulations could be applied. So, like, what if what if we are the simulation? <laughs> what if we are a coronavirus simulation <laughs> and it was all just yeah. building up to this? <laughs> so then it's just going to be turned off once. <laughs> oh, don't say that. <laughs> 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 That's the most fucked up thing. India Golf 9 9 er that's fucked up. It's, it's, it's incredibly fucked up. Like, imagine losing, uh, like, this whole place we're in being a simulation. Like, this beauty and everything is, is yeah. just, f like, a fucking yeah, Alex, computer. film the mountain over there. Look at that. Look at how fucking gorgeous it is. This is, you know what, one positive to come from, you know, this horrible pandemic that's affecting everyone so negatively is that we've, you know, we've, we've kind of got a bit of a appreciation for the... The, the wonders of the environment and how much we do need the outdoors. And well, yeah, look at look at what inside. we've accomplished. Yeah, look at this. Like, just in in the short amount of time that we've been here, like we've made You're a right there, camp James. for ourselves. We've set up our own set. There's all sorts. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just glad you remembered to bring the camera. Otherwise, we'd be fucked for the jokers. <laughs> yeah, we've got little things off camera that we can. You know, like a backup generator and a little modem and stuff like that. Yeah, and yeah. Satellites and all that kind of shit, but... This is fun. This is a good chance to get away from society and kind of just contemplate things for a bit. You know, it helps clear your head of all the, you know, unnecessary things that you don't really kind of need in life. It's, it's, it's liberating to be able to 
just come out here and just you know chill have a nice like, camping weekend with the boys yeah yeah i downloaded like all of the sopranos onto my ipad and i've just been chilling um <laughs> <laughs> Is what I'm watching that kind of stuff. Yeah, um, it, on the subject of the Sopranos, I um. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I started watching The Godfather Part One. You um, started watching The Godfather. Yeah, I um, I was uh, just you know uh, a, a bit. It was it was a nice night <laughs> here. <laughs> <laughs> it was a stormy night, and we were we were stuck up in the treehouse. So I, I started watching The Godfather, and uh, Christ, that movie really is really is fucking good. Really is, because I've only seen it once, and I was like, uh, I think I was only like seventeen, so I didn't, I don't know, I didn't, I didn't, it didn't work for me at the time. It's but I'm really into gangster kind of stuff now, though. So it's definitely worth a rewatch. It's. It's incredible to watch because it's like a movie that big, that like grand, where everyone knows it. I make you make assumptions, you expect something from it. Yeah, yeah. And just it, it, it wasn't what I expected, but it was kind of like what I wanted. It's mm. really just kind of gangster, and the the last like half hour is like incredible. It's so good. And yeah, uh, I'm gonna have to watch that. Maybe once I finish The Sopranos, which I've yeah, been um, belting through. I'm gonna watch some part two and then hopefully uh, watch some more westerns because I've been also on a bit of a, uh, a binge of those. And, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah I've been meaning to watch like because all of these movies that are supposed to be in the cinema because no one can go to the cinema, they're just releasing them, um, so you can watch like <laughs> Bloodshot or whatever that Vin Diesel movie that. <laughs> that oh, that, that, movie, that incredible! I won't watch that movie for f <laughs> for free. <laughs> you wouldn't watch it for free. No, I wouldn't be fucking paid to watch that. <laughs> it looks fucking terrible. I'm starting to I'm starting to think that Vin Diesel um <clears throat> is shit. <laughs> <laughs> he, 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 I just like shit. why why is he famous? He was in Fast and Furious. That's that's the only no, reason he's. But it's not like because... he's awesome in Fast and Furious or anything. No, the Iron Giant is a masterpiece. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, the Iron Giant is awesome. Obviously, one of my favorite animated movies <coughs> from when I was a kid. But like, he's no, but his that's, that's he's not playing true. a robot. <laughs> but yeah, he he always plays these roles where he just has like one line, and they are his best roles, like Groot. <laughs> yeah, he's good at doing one line. Yeah. <laughs> it has to be oh, in the I'm Superman. <laughs> yeah, good job, Vin Diesel. Here's fucking <laughs> 200 grand. And he's get, he gets in like a strop with the rock because they're like the such <laughs> bro man dudes. That they yeah, are, like, just accept that you're both shit. <laughs> <laughs> I would say Vin Diesel is worse than the rock. I think Vin Diesel's better purely because of the He's Iron been Giant in more thing. good stuff. Yeah, he has been in more good stuff, but I, I don't know if it's, like, accidental. We shouldn't be talking shit about Vin, though. I have more respect for Vin than The Rock, because he's, like he's like a gamer, isn't he? He, like, loves <laughs> like all the nerds. No, he's shit. a Dungeons & Dragons player. He's what gamers call nerds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that that is actually pretty accurate for, like, such a... A big boy, you know. He just kind of plays Dungeons and Dragons. I remember no, his I'm, ice bucket challenge, where it was like shot like a Fast and Furious like kind Wait, of angle. That, with... that was an actual thing. Don't don't you remember that? I I have the, for some reason when you say Vin Diesel, I just flash yeah back he challenged to the ice like Harrison challenge. Ford. Yeah, but he did it in like a really like I'm I'm too cool to have any like water poured on me, so it was just pure ice. And I remember thinking, come on, Vin. Oh, you're somewhere so hot anyway, you might as well commit, for fuck's sake, Vin. I, 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 I kind of like Vin, though, because I grew up with Fast and Furious. Fair enough. Fair fucking enough. <laughs> um, any final words on uh, shit we're kind of watching and stuff? You didn't really say anything about Call of Duty, but I don't know if you really have anything to say about it. Um... 
Who's really sick, Bob? No, another, the, another the normal Royale. multiplayer is better than. Uh, yeah. Warzone. Warzone is re is really not that great. Um, it bugs me that they called it Warzone just because it's also that really bad game mode in Halo Five. Oh yeah, I, f I, f I actually forgot that that was. Um... Yeah, but we don't talk about that. So. Okay. We'll be back after these messages, bitches. Yeah, we'll be back after these messages, bitches. <laughs> <laughs> Life can be a dick sometimes, so get your dick from out your hand. And don't be a dick, wear a dick. Dick the Head t-shirts available now. Check the description below. Welcome back to the second part of the quarantine cast that we decided on. God, my memory's so The, cor the corn cast. Quarantine corn cast. Corn cast. Yeah, corn c cast? Corn. The corn cast. Coro cast. Core, what, whatever, we'll think of something. It might be something different when this is the uploaded. corn cast. A corn cast, episode one. <laughs> but yeah, this is the part of the show where we answer questions from the corn community. Um, if you want to leave questions for us to answer on future episodes, head over to the <clears throat> corn media Reddit and uh, there'll be a <laughs> suggestion thread where you can ask us whatever you like. Um, this episode, we're going to start with one from. Clown without makeup who says Can Alex and James hold hands for the remainder of the podcast? The sexual tension must be dealt with. What do you think, James? Yeah, yeah, sure. I'm uh, I'm not against I get I'm not against this, but with with the current quarantine we can't So oh, that's a yeah. solid point. Um yeah we <laughs> would gonna... we can celebrate the um the... <laughs> We can celebrate <laughs> James the... What a I'm, magical I'm... moment. I'm one with nature. For those, you not know? Um, for those listening just then, James just literally put his hand up and a fucking bird just landed on it. That, that is crazy. Was... I'm, I'm magical, you know? That's all Bird's the hand holding we need for this one. Yeah. Genuinely, um, as, as good as this episode is in audio form, um, the, the location here is definitely worth checking out the video version on uh, Jar Media's YouTube channel if you are listening. Trust me. Okay. No, trust me. Trust Jim. A piece of shit asks this. Alex, I'm interested in doing some internet trolling similar to what you've done in the past. And I was wondering what platform you think I should use and if you have any tips. I know you're a seasoned troll and I only trust the best of the best. This is a loaded question because I've honestly been out of the trolling business for quite a while now. Um, and, and rightfully so, to be honest. Yeah, I only, I only did I only resorted to it when I was like incredibly bored, um, which I was a lot when I was younger. But I don't know. I used to peruse my favorite places for for trolling people and fucking with people was uh, Yahoo Answers was Yahoo Answers. was one. Yahoo Answers the IGN comment section. <laughs> um, <laughs> And Bye. like Xbox Live was great for it as well. Anything like that. Um, but now I feel like the floodgates are really open in terms of that kind of shit. Like almost to yeah. the point where it's not even as fun. Because yeah. it, there's so much social media choice now. There's so many different apps. Like I'm sure there are people that fucking just troll on Instagram and Snapchat and all this shit. Which uh, I, I don't know. I'm... I'm I'm like retired from the from that kind of sh community. So you managed to get out, you know. You managed to escape. Yeah, but we've also explained before that I'm not a typical kind of troll like that. I'm not the I'm not the type that on like, you know, those cringy uh, middle of the afternoon news report shows where they're complaining about trolls on on the internet type stuff. <clears throat> People telling you to kill themselves and all that. I was never I was never about that life. I, was, I like I like innocent kind of uh, yeah non malicious non malicious so just messing with people making them go like what and that that is a success to me but yeah I don't is Yahoo Answers even around anymore Xbox Live's not the same 
I suppose like the best kind of places are those like VR chat slash like yeah. places like that. Like Oni NG um, has done some like hilarious um... uh, GTA roleplay servers. Those are hilarious. Yeah, yeah, things like that. I feel like there's a new world of uh, gaming possibilities. I feel like gaming is the play the best place to if you want if you're looking to mess with people. Oh, oh, yeah, without a doubt. <clears throat> Pill on face asks this. What would each of your guys' street names be? <clears throat> What's your street James? name? Um That's a that's a that's a difficult one. I, I can't you know I can't I can't share that, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> um there were a few suggestions from the from a few jarlings or cornlings or whatever. Um James would be sleepy or vroom. Vroom. Thoughts? Nah, sleepy. S sleepy. Yeah, you know. Big, I'm, I'm... big sleeps or something. <laughs> big sleeps. Yeah. Sleepy G. <laughs> oh, that's, that's a good one. You've been sleepy. too close to home there, Jim. Too close to home. <laughs> <laughs> had, a, had a very uh, emotional response from this question um, saying, I'm going to guess there'll be one of the following. The trigger, tracer, drifter, the snake, the beast, and the bully. All we need is Paraka. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be, um, I'd probably be, uh, well, Jim would be the beast, obviously. So he's covered. The beast or, uh, Bobby G. <laughs> <laughs> What's with the G thing? Bobby G's a great one. That, that... Bobby G's pretty good. Bobby G, <laughs> Sleepy G, <laughs> and Aki B. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, uh, that works. That 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 rolls off the tongue. You know we you're messing with. Call ourselves um WWA. Explain. What, why why that? Wiggers with attitude. <laughs> <laughs> that go down well. Let's do that. Why don't we rebrand this whole fucking channel that way? Yeah. WWA Media. Wigglings. <laughs> <laughs> H R S N M R P H says this. I'm pretty sure James thinks that Mort is Maurice. Please address this. Of course, they are referencing uh, the Madagascar character Mort. James, who do you think the the character of Mort is in Madagascar? Maurice isn't that King Julian sidekick. <laughs> yeah. What's Mort, so who's Mort? Who's Mort? <laughs> oh shit. Um, I think more is the um. Should we better get inside this, won't you? Fuck. <laughs> what what's Mort? Um, isn't Mort the um the the Dibby? He's like the Dibby who sometimes yeah, 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 appears yeah, yeah, yeah. in the with um. Shit, I'm getting pretty chilly. Um, yeah, he sometimes <laughs> he he sometimes appears with um more Maurice and our boy. Do you prefer Mort or Maurice? I oh, know Maurice is um is, is is a king, you know. So he's not the king, but he's he's king. So I'm I'm a more Maurice kind of guy. Um, on on a similar line, actually, um, Sleazy Rabbit wrote in and asked, uh, "What Mario characters are Madagascar characters?" So oh. answer this fucking question. When is this this stuff gonna end? <laughs> The more we answer it, the more it's just going to keep happening. Well, we have to answer it. Um, Mario is Alex the Lion. Is he? Wait, is he? <laughs> um... Mario is the zebra. Marty. No, 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 yeah, no. That's not put Daisy. Daisy is Maurice. <laughs> Surely Daisy would be um, Gloria. No, that's Peach. yeah, yeah, no, no yeah, because then Luigi is Melman. Yeah. No, no, Luigi is Melman. That's for sure. That's definite. <laughs> <laughs> but then, who the fuck does that make Mario? Mario. Oh. <laughs> um. <laughs> Who's Bowser? 
Bowser is the... Who's Moto Moto? <laughs> In Madagascar 2 is Africa's most wanted or whatever the fuck. Um, you know, he's the he's the big guy, the chunker guy that comes out of the water. I like oh, him. I like him big. Yeah. Mm, no, because then... Then Gloria would have to be Peach. <laughs> fuck this fucking question. Yeah, fuck you for asking it, you <laughs> fucking evil fuck. <laughs> <laughs> who's uh, who's Yoshi? Uh, Yoshi is fucking <laughs> more. Online content sixty nine asks this pretty good question. Hi boys, what is the greatest meme of all time? Factors for your choice can include longevity, redemption arcs, memes that were unfunny and then became funny, and overall comedy level. My vote is for the classic Rick Roll, as it's no. retained a lot of its humour, it's attached is attached to a genuinely good song, and is still a pretty decent prank. <laughs> Do you not like um, um Rick Rolling, James? You got a problem with that? I've got a problem with that, you know. I, I grew up with the harsh battlefield where I would get no joke Rickrolled, and since then. <laughs> Wait, what do you mean no joke Rickrolled? Um, like actual genuinely Rickrolled. You know, they'll be like, how to get. I feel um, like we all how... have. I feel like if you've been on the internet for longer than like a month, you've probably been Rickrolled. Not, not this modern Rickrolling though. This is like hardcore <laughs> Rickrolling. Postmodern <laughs> Rickrolling. Yeah. Well, one of my favourite memes, which is is the um, the scene of Ewan McGregor in the the speeder from ah. the second That's actually Wars. a good shout with the uh, the prequel memes. Um, I've oh. gone on I've gone on a real journey with the prequels the last like decade. <clears throat> like I really turned on them. Then um, gradually over the years, I've I've come to appreciate the humour in them. And the, these prequel memes uh, tickle me, just just purely because of the the, the quotability of them. Like, there's just so there, there's this there's a Star Wars prequel quote for like any situation, genuinely. Fucking anything. Yeah. Like, give me one right now. Hello there. <laughs> See, you can, it's so fucking vague. <laughs> you can do whatever the fuck you want. I think they have a lot of versatility to them as well. You can slap them on things that are so. Like, you know, unrelated, and it's just funny. There have been some good uh, General Grievous uh, lightsaber collection memes as of late, too. Like, we're, we're kind of spoiled for choice in terms of prequel memes, go. I think people have underestimated how good prequel memes are, and just how good the prequels are for, for memes. Yeah, I, I personally like, uh, you know, all the classics. Uso Wanawonga, uh, Lil Annie, you know, just Christ, shit What like the that. fuck is Argy doing? Wanawonga is my favorite meme. Uso wanna wonga. No, so wanna wonga. I'm, I'm not a fan okay, of that... um, those memes, personally. I'm not. They're the one prequel meme I don't like. Why? What, wonga memes? Yeah. <laughs> what's wrong with them? You know what's wrong with them. They're not very good. Okay. Well, g give all, me a meme. All... Give, answer the question then. What is the greatest meme of all time? Oh, that's a difficult one, though. Well, yeah, that's why this, that's why it's an interesting question to talk about. Argy, fuck off! <laughs> I'm starving to death here, guys, if you, without you answering me this fucking question. I, I can't say. There's there's, uh, there's the bongo cat. Okay, that's... that's um... Really? <laughs> yeah, fuck you. <laughs> bongo cat? Are you serious? It's the best meme of all time. It's, it's, a, it's a great meme. I'm curious what Jim thinks on this. Uh, troll face. <laughs> no. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> Jim, yeah, no, troll he's, face. no, he's talking shit. Like, no, no way. Troll face. <laughs> you serious? Yeah. That's shit. That's What's shit. What's your justification? Because you know uh, that one hasn't <clears throat> had, like, a redemption arc. Like, when has that come back? It's just still being used in the same way it was being used when it first was... When it first came around. No, it's 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 not used at all. And I think no, that no, is how is. a meme should die. <laughs> if you cannot, you cannot no, be real. If you're no. saying, if you're saying the troll face is dead, have you seen YouTube 
the the football and car community still love the troll face and that's still on thumbnails to this day <laughs> that's what i'm talking about like people are yeah. still just using it <laughs> yeah no oh, but it. but but i say meme you say troll face do you know what i mean no i say gingers have souls fuck this question <laughs> what was wrong with it i think it's genuinely jim you were the fucking founder of meme chat i mean meme chat What's meme chat? Meme chat? <laughs> well, don't fuck you, fucking asshole. What, what are like, you genuine? Um, what are you realistically talking about? What about this? Like the mm. one does not simply meme from Lord of the Rings. Yeah, that's the best one. Ah, <laughs> that's the worst one. <laughs> fuck you. No, Lord of the Rings actually has some good ones. The um, the Gimli and uh, like those oh, ones are good. No, wait. No, I've decided my best meme. <laughs> what? Um, it combines... Uh, let me see if I can find it. It combines both the prequels and the Lord of the Rings. For real? Yeah, for real. Let Christ. me find this. I'm pretty sure... Uh, James, what, when you're like scrolling through your phone, what meme does it take for you to actually like laugh? Oh, the, the last meme I laughed at was a, um, was a prequel meme. Was it that one of you and McGregor in the car? Yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, of course. But it was unbelievably funny because it was so. It was mixed with another meme, and it was you know it's it's, it's the the meme for me. It's the meme for you. The meme for me. It was like a mate. A, if if you put meme for James for a computer, that's the meme you'd get. Bit of Star Wars, bit of vehicles. Yeah, a bit of a uh, washing. Yeah, that's that's the meme for me. To be honest, like, it is a fucking hard answer because uh, a lot of the yeah. time, I, I'm not. I'm honestly, this might be controversial, controversial to say, but I, I'm not that mad about the uh, you know the original like stereotype meme format of the like bottom text. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, yeah, they top suck. text <clears throat> kind of shit. You know. They're the worst, like, they're the least effort of all memes. There's there's no effort in it at all, and there, there's no humour, uh, like, at all. Yeah, because, like, when you, when you Google, like, best memes of all time, it's, like, fucking Grumpy Cat and that baby that's, like, going, yeah. You know? That's a good meme. That's <laughs> a really good meme. What, the baby going, yeah? Yeah, the baby. I don't even know what that is actually called. And like the baby, yeah. and the uh, <laughs> you know that like the the girl, the crazy ex one. You know that's a very famous. Oh, one. crazy girlfriend, <laughs> crazy ex, Go, crazy girlfriend. Yeah. What's crazy girlfriend? That's another. Ex, one. You know that one. Everyone knows it. She's doing like a crazy face because she's obsessed with you or whatever. I don't like it, man. It... And the meme culture moves so fast, like, the things that pop into my head are just of recent things that I like. Yeah, I quite like uh, Lego Yoda. Oh, dude, that's a great one, actually. I, I feel like Star Wars actually is like a... Anything to do with Star Wars just tickles me, obviously, just because it's what I like already, but it is funny. Because there's a certain, like, generation of memers that is really starting to rise up with, like, the Lego Star Wars memes and shit like that. Oh, yeah, yum, time yum. Phrase. Wallawanga. Misa <laughs> Wanawanga. Yeah, exactly. Completely fucking timeless. Okay. Let's do this one then from a glitch time fail. I think they're a fan of the glitch mob, James. Oh, I used to be. When was the last time you listened to the glitch mob? Uh, a very long time ago when I kind of got past my edgy stage almost. Oh, well, everyone has to have an edgy stage, but this is a tangent, but. I remembered dubstep the other day. Like, I just ran yeah. randomly remembered, wait, dubstep was like a thing, wasn't it? Or like 2010 yeah. kind of time. Well, as far as Deadpool is concerned, it's still a thing. <laughs> 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 no, but I, I was like, fuck. I used to like listen to dubstep a bit. So I went and listened to the songs that I used to listen to in like 2010. Like Skrillex and shit like that. <laughs> and I was like, fuck, this... What was I like thinking? <laughs> 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 it's like, really bad. Yeah. <laughs> I can't stand it now. The same, nah, and the same goes for like um, 
like pendulum. I used to fucking love pendulum. They oh, I, so I still love, I still love a few pendulum songs. I'll always have that like nostalgia for some of their songs, but like I, I, I can't ever say they're like great music or anything. No. <laughs> <laughs> James likes a good head, head headbanger. I yeah, I do. I, I'm without the doubt, without the doubt, without the doubt, the the most diverse <laughs> mu musically between us. The biggest musically. fan of musically. No, the biggest musically. Without the doubt, you're the most musically. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. the question is, dear Jar. Assuming Alex works from home, which I do, what advice would he give for being self-disciplined and do you enjoy it? Do you have a scheduled daily routine or do you play it by ear? Thanks. I ask this because we can all answer it now. We know um, what being in fucking quarantine and having to sort our own shit out <laughs> is like. <laughs> Obviously, like I've, I've been joking that I'm, I'm already basically used to this lifestyle already. The only thing that's really changed is that if I suddenly get a thought like, oh, I want to go buy a lamp from B&Q. Like, I can't do that at the moment. <laughs> I can't do whatever I want whenever I want. But aside from that, yeah. There's definitely pros and cons to it, as a lot of people are finding oh, out yeah. now. <laughs> um, pros being that you kind of get to work on your own, in your own way. You get to yeah. define And you, you never have to shower. Yeah, you never have to shower, you never have to get dressed, you can... Not that we have a shower, layers yeah. build up. Yeah, you never have to go wash in the stream or any shit like that. Yeah, you never have to go wash in the stream. Um, but yeah, it it's, it's definitely hard to get used to. It's a massive change of pace, and it's obviously quite isolating um, when you are, you know, when you're forced to work from home or, or choose to work from home or whatever it may be. Um... I go through like stints of being like really productive and then stints of just being like just shit and just faffing and starting. Yeah, no. and... I, I also have that, you know, working for a moment at the moment, it's a bit like, oh shit. Because there is a thing about it though where it's like sometimes you do need people kind of breathing down your neck to get things done. Um, yeah, it, it definitely takes like a lot of getting used to. And that's for fucking Soiton. I've been doing it so long now, I don't actually even remember what the other side is like. Um, Shit. Basically. Well, do you do you still think that even though you've been in isolation for what working from home for what a week now? About a bit longer. Yeah. Um, I mean, how do you think that compares though? Like you, you don't seem to be enjoying it really. No, I, I don't like it because um, I just become a slob. Um, I don't have that that constant push. And it's See, like that, not... that was what motivated me to get the dogs, though. It was like, well, I can't be a slob because I have these animals that need like exercise, so it's forcing me outside. It's forcing me to be distracted by something. So It's, you know I mean? it's like... Um... What I mentioned last last episode about like the jeans and the 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 mindset with wearing certain clothes, hmm. I think the the, cl the clothes you see now I've been wearing for like three three days straight because you know uh, I've not got much to do so I'm not going to dress to impress when I'm looking like this. Yeah, that's another thing actually is like if you don't have to dress to impress anyone in the like workplace or come across as being professional or anything. Um, I suppose you can let your standards slip a bit. Um, yeah, and just you know, it's not good. It, it just drains the mind, you know. I've 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 gone between like different types of schedules. Um, I kind of have a loose daily routine, um, but I've I tr I try to have a daily routine, but I just tried like with work. I have a fixed routine. If I do this, then you know that type yeah, of thing. But because you're, like, you're home, going I, there I geographically. You have to commit to it you know like because what else are you gonna do but when you're at home yeah. it's like well that's also the same place i jerk off with bananas the same place i you know what else do people do play video games yeah and you know when i play video games for like if i start playing video games in the morning i know i'm having a bad day because when it gets to like four o'clock i'm gonna be 
sick of them. But that's the thing though, like sometimes I'll find that like I don't do any work till like 5 p.m. and then I work till like 11 um, or later. It's just like, I don't know. It depends what you're doing too. If you're just doing like spreadsheets and accounting, like that I have to force myself to do and just get it done type shit. But when it's yeah. like anything creative, um, it, it's definitely there's a process to it. That's for soy. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, the, the Jarlings should write in and say if they have any, uh, how they're coping with this, because, yeah, as they say, I'm, I'm fairly used to this kind of dynamic at this point, so it's not really changing my day-to-day -day as much as it is for the people out there. It's really affecting and fucking over, so. Yeah. Jamie, you've been rather quiet. Got anything to add to that one? Well, let me just say, um, it is what it is. That's fair. That's definitely fair. Okay, let's go on to this one then from uh, Quinlan Boss, who says, So I have a... And I don't know, this might be just completely fucked, but let's just do it anyway. So I have a proposition my family always talks about. Let's say you have a box of donuts, and you are the first person in the house to open them. You want to try a few, but want to limit yourself to only one or two. Do you A... Cut some in half to try <sighs> multiple, forcing other no. people to only have half a donut, or B, just take one or two full donuts. Personally, Cutting. I'm on side B because it seems selfish to force others into having only small portions of donuts, but that's just me. I'm interested to hear your takes. No, no cutting donuts in half is, is bullshit. That ruins donuts. They, they, it's, it's, you Why are an animal. In the what style? Like if Between it's, if what it's got, style? If it's got a filling like that, yeah, I'd agree. That completely fucks it. But well, I don't. The, the I don't ring ones. Does it? James doesn't like filling that? ones because it it's got a different change in like texture. <laughs> I have a weird. Thing. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. So so okay. you have a huge problem with people cutting ringed donuts in half. No no I, I <laughs> no, no I have a no stop. I have a I have a problem with it because I lived in a household where my sister would would actually cut things enough because she not because she didn't want to try them or try to try multiple because she just didn't want to eat a full one now this becomes an issue where you know i know we've got donuts it's nine o'clock i'm i'm playing xbox with the boys i fancy a donut so i go to the kitchen to get a donut and the disappointment when i only allowed to eat half of it because she's cut half off and you know is out of the house so i i've been excited to get a donut and i'm only getting half of it that's why I don't like it. You just eat a fucking donut. No, if I want a donut, I want all half. of a donut. I don't want half. I'm going to uh, propose a, an out-of-the-box sort of answer. Okay, shoot. Buy your own box. Eat the whole box. No, that, 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 that's, that's bullshit. That does not work. <laughs> it does work. <laughs> no, no it, it, it doesn't work. It does work. No, no, it doesn't. You have to admit it does work. It fucking doesn't work. It works. If I want to eat something for myself, over, <laughs> I um, <laughs> I will buy a whole thing and just hide it, and then it's mine. No, but here's the you thing. I, I, what about if I didn't buy? Okay, let's just say the the box was only bought by my parents. Okay, I just so want to eat it. So oh. you have no right to even <laughs> claim it as your own. <laughs> no, that's bullshit. He's got a good point, James. No, no, that's shit. No, if you buy it yourself and then people complain that you're not sharing, it's like, brother, I paid for this. It's mine. <laughs> no, no, because when you live, when you live with your parents and your family, you share. You know, the food that's brought in is shared. Not in my so family. <laughs> I can attest to that. Well, okay. Well, in my family, I'm I'm the one who eats most of the food. So if, if I want a full donut, I get a full donut. And if I don't get a full donut and I get half, I'm gonna be disappointed. It was so extreme in a uh, in the Beltman household that um, we'd hide like Crusher and like fucking. <laughs> oh, geez, Swiss not rolls. the drawer. <laughs> <laughs> Swiss rolls in like the drawer and all that kind of shit. <laughs> And <laughs> <laughs> like Sainsbury's Basics, like already popped popcorn in a huge bag. 
<laughs> that would like get stuck to the melted like wham bars that were in there. <laughs> <laughs> that Which is a power is combo. Mm, deary, See, deary me. I I would say I say it's horse. You should never cut a donut. You should never you should never just sit there and cut a donut and eat, eat half. Just eat the full donut. You don't go to like a box of strawberries and cut a strawberry in half and eat it. Why would you do it to a donut? I'll let the jarlings think about that one. And, uh, okay, consider back. it this way. You want a banana, but you only want half. Are you going to cut the banana in half? Depends what use is a banana to you. But we're going to eat it. It's what if banana. you're making banana bread and the recipe only requires half? But that's different because you're using it to create something. You're not just eating half a banana. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Okay, no, consi okay consider this. Okay, and consider this. <laughs> I'm considering it. You made me lose my chain of thought. What did I fucking do? I'm just looking at you. Yeah, if I look at your goofy ass face, it's it's, it's hard to keep keep serious. <laughs> Okay, how about this one? I think I said that last one was the last question, but... You did, you did. You're, you're shitting on us now. No, but I, I noticed a, a good one. The room is on fire 12 says, Can you each do your highest and deepest voices? Let's do this in jar order. Jay? Highest... Hi Jamie's first. Jim? Highest and deepest. Uh, uh. James? Good afternoon, morning, evening, or night. <laughs> Good afternoon, morning, evening, or night, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. No, you can do better than that. For which? Both. That, that was a piss poor example. Well, it's better than your one. Fucking okay, hell. Okay, then. What do you mean it's better than mine? There's That's it. Begging. I'd say this comes to an end right now. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie, stop! Jamie! <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>